Hey guys, Jeff here again. Uh, once again, something something a little different. Uh, this is this is my old Pontiac that I've been working on. Well, not lately, but this was a project at one time. It's obviously a bigger project now. Uh, when I bought this thing, it was a flathead six, three in the tree, drum brakes all around. Uh, I did a did a disc brake conversion on it quite a few years ago before before it was painted. The reason it got painted was the hood latch let go on me doing 120 kilometers an hour. And it didn't like that. It uh, it folded it basically right there. Came up. I've got a visor for it too, which which is in the car. The inside of the car is an absolute disaster, so don't judge me on that. But it the hood flipped up. Obviously, the hood took a took a dislike to that. Tops of the fenders got caved in. Both windshields were destroyed. Luckily, all it did to my visor is just, it made five little ripples from the stainless. Um, yeah, so that wasn't fun. Luckily, luckily it was 30 degrees Celsius outside and the window was down. So I had to pull an Ace Ventura to keep it going straight because you can't see anything when that hood is up. Uh, so yeah, got her all fixed up. Ended up picking this paint color. I got a buddy that calls it uh, Atomic Vomit, so I guess it suits it. We went with a satin finish on it. Uh, another buddy of mine did some pinstriping on it. Uh, Vaughn Knob is, uh, is his title, and he's a young guy. Well, not super young, but younger than I am. And he's just a, just a wizard when it comes to doing stuff like that. He did the back as well. Um, this it, this thing is filthy. Like right now, it's just sitting in sitting in my buddy's old greenhouse, just to keep it out of the weather. Because I obviously have no windows on it. I did a chop on it quite a while back. Um, Brent from Half Ass Customs actually walked me through it. I had never done one, so I tell you that was painful though, because this car was mint. I just didn't like how high the roof line was. So what I did is I took. I took four inches out of the front because I wanted to keep my visor and then five out of the back. And all we did is we just sliced the back below the window and laid the, the factory window glass or panel down so I don't have to cut that glass. Side glass, obviously, I need to cut. Uh, windshield glass, because I, well, I've got new new glass for it, because the uh, the hood actually flipped up a second time, a week out of the body shop, uh, wrecked everything all over again. But I don't want to. I don't want to really want to talk about that one. Anyway, uh, it's got it's got a 305 in it right now. I picked up a an 82 Monte Carlo quite a few years ago and I wanted the small block in it so it's got a 305 turbo 350 with the Monte Carlo rear diff um, I'll show you what I got under the hood it's it's kind of it's not very good right now I ended up cracking the block I don't have any hood hinges on right now so I'm kind of being gentle but this is what I got going on here. It looks okay, other than obviously the intake's not on it and, and this and that. Uh, another fun thing that happened while I was playing with this thing, brand new water pump. Um, decided to shear the, the shaft off, brand new. We, uh, Dave and I were playing with the four barrel, trying to get the four barrel carburetor to kick in and got it and so obviously the hood wasn't on it so I'm sitting here right about here 
playing with the throttle, getting the four barrels to kick in. All of a sudden, this let go, and boom, took out my rad. So basically, uh, wrecked it. Got a replacement for it, put it all back in. And then I think I froze the block, because I'm a dumbass. But like I say, it's only a little 305. So, yeah, I put it down. so we got a, uh, got a couple other options we can put in it. I'm not sure about, not sure about LSing this one. Maybe someday. But we've got a couple uh, 383 strokers that uh, we might make, make fit this thing, which obviously is just going to be a bolt in. But just debating on what uh, what route to take. Obviously, I got to finish off my chop. Um, put a nice dent in the roof where I was living before. Uh, I was just in a little two-car garage, and I fell on it, crushed it. But I think we can get that uh, figured out. And if you're asking why I fell on it, is because oh, there's that's where it's creased right there. Anyway, yes, I fell on it. I was putting poly up on my ceiling because it wasn't insulated. And I slipped, and I fell. Uh, interior, like I say right now, is an absolute disaster. It's basically just storage. But I plan on... You know what? I don't even know what I plan on doing. Obviously, I'm going to run the gauges. I have the gauge cluster. Um... That's my low car shifter. See if I can make that work. And then there again, it all depends on what I'm using for a transmission. The seats are just gross little short back buckets. I think they came out of a an Acura Integra. I just pulled the headrests off. I needed something shorter. The the factory bench. Obviously, I sat too high in it. So uh, especially once the roof was chopped. So I got rid of it. Uh, I want to try and figure out a way, like I love the fender skirts, but I want to make them so that they're basically seamless. Try and hide them somehow. Uh, I've got a set of lake pipes for it, so I want to put those on. Obviously I got some rust repair to do here, it's starting to, starting to bleed through. All sorts of, all sorts of fun stuff going on here. I uh, had to slope, slope the pillars because once I chopped it, obviously nothing lined up. So, I don't know, they turned out okay. Obviously they're not finished. But yeah, just figured I'd give you guys a little, uh, a little heads up on a, another project that we're going to be working on. This is my own personal one, so kind of, kind of looking forward to getting this one back on the road. This was my daily for quite a while until the motor mount. I sheared off the uh, passenger side, no, the driver's side motor mount sheared. And of course the torque of the engine flipped it over, tore the motor mount out of the frame on the other side, flipped it over, then it sat and got parked. So instead of fixing that, I chopped it. Makes sense. Not really. Anyway, a little bit more of Ian's pinstriping. But yeah, we have a lot of projects. And I'm in a, in a place here right now that's got a, got a few more potential projects. Not ours, some stuff that we might be working on. Like here, we got an old 67 Pontiac, I believe it is. Uh, I'm not much of a Ford guy, so I don't even know what year that one is. Then we got a 65 Chevy. Uh, C10 over there on the other side of that board. And then, the fellow that owns this place here, this is his old uh, work truck. It's a 40, 49, 50, something like that. 
So we gotta find a, actually he needs a new transmission for that one, so we're gonna try and find that and get that put in for him. But anyway, here we go. If anybody's got parts for a 52 Pontiac, 51, 52 Pontiac, um, Canadian model, which actually, they call it a Fleet Leader Deluxe. The American version is obviously called the Chieftain. This is on a Chevy platform. All the suspension parts are Chevy, not Pontiac. And these cars are, I think, about eight inches shorter in the nose because this came with a flathead six and the Chieftains came with an eight. But I need some chrome parts. Um, this stuff here is pretty pitted. Something happened there when I was at Buddy's place. Yeah, I like to shine it up a little bit. I'm not going to chrome it because then it would be worth more than a car. But there you have it. It's my 52 Pontiac. Soon to be on the road, I hope. Talk to you later.